o'clock. Uh, first item on the agenda is the acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Walk in. No walk ins. Very good. Uh, the third item of the agenda, and, and, and the main reason we're here tonight, I think, is the uh, discussion and a vote. Uh, for an innkeeper in Common Vic license for the uh, Inner Situate Harbor. So, Mike, would, gentlemen, would you come up and make a, As a give uh, you like a very brief presentation and answer any questions that we might have with Janusz yourself? And great. If I might, Mr. Yep. Chair, I'd like to recuse myself. Um, these gentlemen are my clients, so yep. I will leave the, uh, the, Alrighty. the room. Thank you. How are you? How are you, sir? Good evening. How are you, Michael? Good to see you. How are you? Good, good. Now, we haven't met. I'm Dave Ferguson. Dave, good to see you. Good, great. Um, we're here to apply for the common vicular and uh, innkeeper's license. Um, three families have gotten together uh, to purchase uh, what is known as the Inn at Situate Harbor. Uh, so we're all pretty excited about it. Uh, we have Mr. Cooney, uh, myself, and uh, Bruce Lever, uh, who is our, they're all uh, Situate residents. Uh, Mike has been here for a long time. Bruce has been here for uh, all, uh, the next longest time, and I've been here for the least for about 12 years. So we're all, uh, we're all entrenched in the community and looking forward to this uh, adventure, uh, very excited uh, part. So, um, any questions immediately that might? Uh, Just what, did you say going to or have? We are in the process and a lot of that actually hinges on tonight's meeting, uh, very specifically the innkeeper's license. Um, we are set to close uh, Thursday morning at eight o'clock. So it's, uh, it's pretty much done, we hope. I think I'll, I'll just, just jump in here. I think I can speak for, for, for a lot of people in town who welcome uh, the reopening of that building and look forward to, to it reopening. It's, it's, uh, it's been a, I don't want to use the word landmark, that's maybe a little too historical, but it's certainly a, a building that's, that's been a great value to the residents of Situate, great value to the, to the merchants of Situate Harbor and, and, and people who have guests in town. So. I think your reopening it will be uh, well received. Great, we're, we're very excited about it. Uh, no, go ahead, Tony. Well, I was just going to ask, what are your intentions to keep it as the inn and have a restaurant, or what? What is your just a quick synopsis? Sure. Um, both uh, Bruce and myself have been in, in hotels for uh, combined probably over 50 years, so we're hotel people, and we, our intention uh, very much is to keep it as an inn for as long as possible. It's it's uh, it, it's in our blood. That's what we want to do. That's the reason we're buying it, uh, is to keep it as an inn. Um, the restaurant, uh, we have several improvements that we're going to do um, sort of right away, and that's sort of paint the building, clean up the, uh, the grounds area, and redo a little bit of the parking lot, make it spruce it up and make it look good, and uh, fix a couple things with that. Internally, we have some uh, improvements for the rooms that are planned uh, that are going to start right away. Um, the uh, Long-term agenda is really uh, to, to make it our life and to keep you know, the, the, the town of Situate happy with the inn uh, as an inn, and, and it always will be an inn. So. And when, when do you think you would be actually opening for business if everything goes right? If everything goes well, we're looking at um, the Friday of Heritage Days. Oh, oh that's great. That's right around the corner. Just like the seven, 11th of August or that's something? That's the like? uh, 7th of August is that Friday. So uh, if uh, it's an ambitious schedule, um, and I think uh, I think we're up to it. Just one other little question, then I'd share Joe's comments about the pool. People have asked me, and I just I, I, I'm so excited for you guys. I just you know, a couple of people I've talked to are just you know really excited about this happening again, especially from what how you answered Tony. You know. I, Previous owner had talked about being, you know, making some major renovations, but it doesn't seem sound like you're gonna, you know, do that, make a lot of changes. And I think the town really needs that place. I really look forward to seeing it open. That's great. Do you think you'd be able to maintain the pool? Or? Uh, right now, our intention is to to look at the pool and keep it as a pool. We uh, when we get in there on Thursday, uh, that's gonna be our uh, our first time we really actually get a full access to the building. The previous the landlords currently been very restrictive so we haven't had time really to get in there and haven't been allowed the time to really examine all of the aspects of it so the pool area needs a little needs a you know some spit and polish um, and uh, as soon as we get there on Thursday and Friday we'll have somebody in to look at what's going to take to basically you know uh, clean that area up Great. yeah Rick good luck yeah I echo everything these guys say so uh, I can show my support here one motion mr. chair 
If there's nothing further, we'll have a motion on the. One last question, and this may be for Kim or someone that else that knows this. The common Vic license is to sell hot beverages or hot food or that sort type of thing. The in is the in license a whole separate one? Yes, it is. Yes. And that's just allowed to allowing you to rent Correct. rooms, right? There's no other. So the license is cover, covering the restaurant side of it and any sort of convenience store that may be in there and the ins is for the ability to rent the rooms. That's correct. Right, so Move the board selectmen vote to grant an in-holders license to the inn at Situate Harbor, 7 Beaver Dam Road upon successful inspections by fire, building, and health departments. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's unanimous. Move the board selectmen vote to grant a common vic victualler's license to the inn at Situate Harbor, 7 Beaver Dam Road upon successful inspections by the fire, building, and health departments. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. That's unanimous. All right. Great Thank job, you. guys. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good, good luck. Good luck. See you guys. Right. I would suggest, uh, just if you would, when the inspections are done, when they're all complete, just for our, if you could not let Kim know that they're all done. Okay, sure. I mean, the license is yours. There's no, it's just yeah, a, We've had the, the building and the fire have already been Oh, have you? Good. Good. Then. Oh, excellent. Fine. Thanks, guys. Good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck. Someone tell John Dennehy that we can move on. Bring him back in. Bring him back in. Uh, Mary. Hey, Mary. Hello. These are uh, another reason for the meeting tonight before the end of the fiscal year. Well, if you get to fi July 15th, before July 15th yeah. fiscal year, uh, we have some end of the year transfers to make, and Mary will outline those now. You want to deal with the reserve fund transfers now, too, Mary? Explain those. Yeah, I know they did. So. Yeah. So I they already voted. They, they already voted did. on Thursday night, and they mm -hmm. voted these line items transfers as well on Thursday night. I think it's interesting to note, if I understood Thursday night correctly, that with the transfer of the sixty-nine thousand uh, into snow and ice, mm -hmm. I guess we don't have a deficit going into next year. I right. think that, you know, I've been hopping for the past six months about. What a terrible deficit we're going to have because of the snow and ice going into this year. But it looks like this washes that out. So that's great. Yeah. And for those of you at home, that's seventy thousand dollars above our budget that we needed yeah. to take from the reserve fund. Uh, motion. Um, our question. Move the board of selectmen vote to grant line item transfers as recommended by the town accountant. I'll second that. For the discussion. Um, just a, a couple of qu quick comments that this is, um, again, because most people don't see this at home, this yep. is just us transferring funds from, from one department that may be under budget to, to hit, fill a budget that's over a little bit over budget. Um, the largest one is snow and ice and then the debt service, which is, you know, really has a larger impact than you may think because it would have been a, a surplus yep. there. You know, when, yep. when you bond something for three instead of four years, you got additional principal and interest that wasn't in the budget. But of course, in the long run, it all works out better because the debt's going to be paid off. Right. Actually, we had, 
it ended up the interest payment was actually less because we were paying back in three years instead of four. So it's just the principal right. payment was larger. We don't have to so in the long run, it's going to work out in our benefit. But, um, no. but it was great that we had the funds to, to cover that. And then the council, I mean, I don't think it surprises any one of us that our legal bills exceeded what we're putting in there. With and the and I, I looked at the, the bill, and it basically is due to that, mm -hmm. that suit. So Great. Which settled, so. I think just while we're on a, a money item here, I, I read the other day, and I'm sure we all, everyone read it, uh, that there appears to be additional cuts coming down on the state level for this year that we're in now. I think they're talking about $150 million, uh, which doesn't seem like a lot. But it would, you know, it probably means, it could very well mean local aid adjustments. Uh, and this is only the first month of the year, and nothing seems to be going right on a state level. So I would anticipate that we may be facing a really dark fiscal year 10. So we'll see. Oh, Hopefully see. not, but that's just while we're on the topic, I thought I'd throw that in. Uh, did we go, John? Just, uh, just as a, I, I know that we talked about it, I think in uh, May, beginning of May, we were thinking of trying to get together at least on a monthly basis to try to figure out where we were and, and was wondering if we could trend it in comparison to, to maybe the way it was like a year ago to see where we are in comparison to a year ago, whether or not we're falling a little behind. And if we are, then maybe we'll get an idea of like yeah, where I we stand sooner than later. Yeah, I do reports that show compared like this year to last year. Yeah. I, um, yep, totally true. I met with Mary just a couple days ago and what what and we actually talked about this I think a month ago at our meeting where there's gonna we're gonna come up with like some key indicators that we want to see on a monthly right. basis some of the more variable ones so that and then just get Mary on the agenda for the f you know first or second meeting of every month where we go over the previous months to see where we are on those questionable things um, after we vote this I'll just give a quick update on the other stuff that Mary and I went over Okay, good. I think that would be a great idea, kind of like we have Banger in with the DPW report every so often, having that every month or so. That would be great. Mm -hmm. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you, Mary. Thank Mary, you, thank you. Thank you, Chen. Tony, why don't you just give Yeah, it? just, uh, Mary, while you're here, you may correct me if I say anything wrong. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, we got the final numbers from the state in terms of um, fiscal year 2010's numbers, although as Joe mentioned, it still is, is kind of variable. But um, it looks like the recap for 010 right now, although there's a few items that still have to be reconciled, is about a quarter of a million dollars we're over budget, which is a lot less than the 600 and 550 that we were talking about a month ago. So, um, and that, that deficit will be split between the town and the school. Um, I think we do have to relook at a few items, uh, most importantly probably unemployment, because mm -hmm. right, we, unemployment. we had put unemployment in there very high, anticipating a lot of layoffs at the school, which ended up not happening. So we'll have to look at that budget item. And then we should go to both sides and say, how are you going to make up this, this difference so that we can go? So we need to look at local receipts again, the estimate. Right. And those are the types of things that I think we should look at on a monthly basis. You know, new growth, local receipts. Um, you know the levy is pretty set you know you know what you're going to get but there's there's certain of those um local receipts and certain expenses that we may just want to look at that you know we can get a simple report with the trending of the prior years and right. just you know take a glimpse at it and know where we are <laughs> so that number i i think is probably on the high side it's there may the be high side. i think it might end up <coughs> lower because the quinbill money got drastically reduced so that will mean that the police department will have to be because according to the contract the town pays 50 percent right. so that they only get whatever the state pays so they'll have to reduce that budget for the amount that they assumed they were going to receive from the state mm -hmm. so there'll be a slight pickup there and then yeah it's about a, um i got the number today it's about one hundred and forty thousand dollars. so right so once we get local receipts in line because that could go that could counteract some of that and then we look at the unemployment which was put in very high that may bring that number down how much much more manageable might be okay for 2010 so far yeah. unless the state comes up with new numbers again local receipts could but let's not count on it could what well now i'm more frightened about state revenue we yeah keep. all right well we budgeted all of this stuff down you yeah. know so we were you know we weren't caught by budgeting something flat yeah. and finding but yeah. did we budget down enough is the question 
I, I agree. That's, I think, that's my point. Especially keeping in mind that today's July 14th. <laughs> yeah, off to a good start. Thank All right, thank you, Tony. Right, thank, thank you, Mary. Uh, item five, appointment of Democratic and unenrolled town election workers. Motion. Uh, the board of second appoint the Democratic Town Committee and unenrolled election workers per the submitted lists. Second. <coughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Uh, next is the resolution of the bottle bill. Bottle bill has been uh, amended, I guess. I think so. John, if you'd be kind enough to, to read it. I think uh, I it's thought about maybe just summarizing it. Summarizing these bills. It's, what does the board think? Do you want to? I mean, these resolutions and and. Fine. I mean, you know, it's fine to summarize. Yeah, I'm first, yeah. John. Suffice it to say. Expression. To suffice it to say, this is again the uh, redemption bill, if you will. It's an amendment to it to include other classes of um, potentially um, returnable items, bottles. Um, and so, in essence, um, we are supporting a resolution to update that bill and to include these other items. And um, the resolution, for all intents and purposes, discusses how it's been effective. Uh, it's uh, been effective since 1983 when the resolution was uh, first, or shall we say the law was passed, uh, collecting anywhere between 70 and 85% and um, suffice it to say, it's the 27th anniversary, um, so on and so forth. That's what the resolution says, folks. And we're going uh, uh, we're going to vote this resolution tonight. Could I have a motion? I move that the Board of Selectmen accept the resolution to support the updating of the Massachusetts Bottle Bill. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, Next is other business. We just have a f couple of items. Nothing, uh, first of all, other business. Anyone have any other business? Just briefly on the 4th of July, I want to commend the um, uh, police and the fire departments. I know uh, I was down in Sand Hills. They did a wonderful job policing. I thought, um, you know, I, I understand that um, there weren't as many crazy people out there. Still were, but nonetheless, um, they did a, a, certainly a good job policing that area. The other th thing I wanted to just say is that thanks to the uh, DPW, um, I know that they did a, a good job picking up Peggy Beach for the uh, seaweed, but I know Sand Hills was completely covered with it and uh, received a lot of comments, comments and feedback thanking the DPW for, for doing it, Pete Spencer as well as the DPW workers. That's all I have. Okay. That uh, takes care of the second piece of correspondence, actually, is a thank you uh, on the next agenda item. A thank you to the DPW for the excellent job that they did picking up uh, the seaweed down the beaches, the sand hills. I know they did Peggotty. I know they did. Uh, I don't know if there's anything done to mine it, but there was one day a couple of weeks ago that was almost a foot thick, and they picked it all up. So that's on the correspondence that's done. Uh, uh, additional correspondence. Uh, John, you want to read this? Sure. Um, Arthur there's Brown of Hummer Rock. Arthur Brown had, um, of Hummer Rock wanted to at least acknowledge that um, the animal control officer, Kim Stewart, and her dedicated staff, uh, staff and volunteers uh, deserve a huge thank you and congratulations on the completion <coughs> and the opening of the animal shelter on June 30th, to th uh, June 28th, which was Sunday of this year. And he wanted to say that they did a, a beautiful job in the building, the accomplishments of not just them, but uh, other people who were involved with the animal shelter, and that tens and hundreds of people showed up uh, for the event, and it was well done. And he wanted to give a personal thank to uh, thank her, thank you to her and her staff for doing that. Um, and you're correct. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. No, that's I, I fine. I misspoke, but uh, Jean and Peg Sullivan uh, wanted to thank for the cleanup at Turner Beach. And then finally, the other correspondence we have is uh, Deborah S. Ingram, the Acting Deputy Assistant Administrator for Mitigation, Mitigation uh, uh, Directorate from FEMA of the United States um, Department of Homeland Security, said, uh, Dear Richard Agnew, Dear Mr. Agnew, uh, congratulations. The Department of Homeland Security, which is the Federal Emergency Management Agency, otherwise known as FEMA, uh, has determined um, town of Situate will increase to a class eight in the National Flood Insurance Program, known as NFIP, community rating systems, 
and that the floodplain management activities implemented by your community qualifies it for a 10% discount in the premium cost of flood insurance for the uh, National Flood Insurance Program policies issued or renewed in special flood hazard areas on or after May 1st of 2009. This increase is based on a field verification of your five-year cycle CRS application. And again, it's signed by uh, Deborah S. Ingram. That's, that's, that's huge. I think, you know, that's everyone is paying an additional premium I mean, because they're in the floodplain for flood insurance. A 10% reduction is, uh, is, is very, very helpful to them, I would imagine. So congratulations to the town for achieving that level of, uh, level eight. Uh, next item is one of our favorites, Chairman. Move to adjourn. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.